Hi everyone, so I know that I have not posted on YouTube in a very long time, but um, I have been listening to you guys and my last video that I posted June 4th, 2020, so nearly a year ago, um, a lot has changed. I'm going into my last year by the way, but um, in that video I got a ton of questions and I honestly think that I did like really well in terms of like I responded to most of your comments. But I know that there were some that I probably did not address. So for those of you who like subscribed because you were like expecting more UCSD content, I definitely don't want to disappoint. Like, basically address every single question that I got under this um, last video. And then I'm also just going to talk about like some common questions that I get about UCSD in like everyday life and just like general misconceptions and stuff. I'm also in my off-campus apartment right now, so if you want me to make a future video about like off-campus housing and just like that whole process, I would love to do that as well. I'm also down to do a tour, so just let me know if there's enough interest, I will do it. But besides further ado, I will get into the questions now. But obviously the first question that everybody asks that I honestly want to spend the most amount of time on is, is UCSD actually socially dead? Literally every single person that I've talked to asks this question. Also, when I was deciding colleges, because I was deciding between UCSD and UCSB, and the only reason why I didn't want to commit to UCSD was because I was scared that it was socially dead. So I'm going to do my best to try to answer this question. Hopefully I can make it as clear as possible. Um, but yeah, this is going to be my most straightforward answer. So personally, for me, I would say no. And it's not like me trying to sell you on the school or anything. Like, I'm really just going to answer these questions honestly and neutrally. I have, like, no incentive to, like, convince you to go to UCSD. But in my opinion, it's not socially dead. So if you think about UCSD in terms of, like, C to UC USC, obviously we're not going to be as, like, typical and you won't have the typical college experience where we have, like, sorority houses and frat houses, like, all in a row. Like, we don't have a frat row. We also don't have a football team and we don't, like, all kind of, like, congregate to go to football games and tailgates. So if you think of the college experience in that way, yes, we are socially dead, but we do have Greek life and you can go to parties. I was like easily able to go to parties like until COVID happened pretty much. I will say that if you're a guy, it'll be a little bit harder, but if you are involved in Greek like Greek life and if you are a girl, like you should have absolutely no like issue getting into frat parties. We're also pretty close to SDSU, so you can definitely party there. I personally never did it because I never really felt the need to. But the way that I defined the way that I define socially dead is how easy is it for you to make friends? And I had like absolutely no issue making friends. Like within, I think my first week of college, I met like a ton of people, and I met my best friends. And every single year, I have been able to meet like a new best friend and like add on to my current circle. The thing that I love about UCSD is like no one is really exclusive here. I'm not sure if your high school is like this, but I know that some high schools are like extremely clicky and there are like popular crowds and stuff. But like at UCSD, we don't do any of that, which I think is like absolutely amazing because who wants to deal with that anymore? But in terms of making friends, it's really easy. There's always stuff to do. Um, like you can always have plans. I think that a lot of people will make like really wholesome plans where they'll just like go out to convoy and they'll eat dinner together or they'll like go get sushi together or Korean barbecue or like Mexican food and a lot of people like surf, have beach picnics. So in terms of like wholesome activities, like we're amazing at that. It's also very easy to make friends here. Everyone is so kind. But I would say like you can always make friends through orgs. It's like really easy that way. You can also make friends through Greek life, athletics, um, people in your hall. So in general, no, I don't think UCSD is socially dead, but long story short, it depends how you define socially dead. Like I'm pretty sure we are D1 by now, which like I don't think it really matters much, but we are D1. So if you do want to go to like volleyball games and basketball games, those are also very fun as well. And not to mention the surrounding area is absolutely amazing, so we have tons of socializing options. So hopefully that kind of clears it up. Um, I tried to give you the most like straightforward and honest 
um, answer as possible, but if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to just leave it in the comments, um, but hopefully that still helps. All right, so I'm going to move on to the second question, which is, does a student's intended major affect the possibility of admission? So I actually know this answer very well because I worked in admissions for my first two years at UCSD. I was a tour guide, but I also worked in the Office of Admissions. So I kind of learned a bit, a bit or two about the whole admissions process, but I can confidently tell you that no, a student's major does not affect their possibility of admission. So when you're first applying to UCSD, you apply to the school as a whole. So everyone is competing on the exact same level. Um, whether you apply as a communications major or an engineering major or a theater major, you need to first get accepted into the school. Once you're accepted into the school, then you try to kind of like get into your specific major. So obviously if you're applying for a major that's not that competitive, I'll use my major for example, I'm an international business major, there's no competition really there so I'm gonna get my major. However, if you're applying to an impacted major like computer science or engineering, then that's when you'll have to compete. So you will first get into the school and then you'll be um, considered for like your admission into your major. If you make it into your major, you will get into your major. You'll get into like UCSC as a bioengineering major. However, if you don't get accepted into your major, then you will come in as undeclared or you'll like get in as your second choice. Um, so hopefully that answer clears it up. Um, but the third question is, is getting into UCSD mostly based on GPA and test scores? So this one I also know pretty well, but um, basically we take a very holistic approach on your application. So we consider not only your GPA and SAT scores, which I don't know if we're still doing SAT scores, that might've been like ruled out, but um, Besides your like objective statistics, we also highly consider your extracurricular activities and your personal statements. I also know um, because I used to be like a college like obsessed whore, but um, I know that you are also not competing against the entire applicant pool. You're competing specifically against your district. So if like you don't go to like a super good school, and like the average SAT score in your area is like a little bit on the lower end, then you don't really need to worry about like getting like a 1520 because you're not competing against like people from like, like other districts. Like you're mostly just competing against your own district, which in my opinion, I think is the most, you know, just way to do it because everyone grows up with different resources and you shouldn't be penalized for you know like not having access to like SAT courses or tutoring or stuff like that um, so yeah everything is considered pretty equally um, I would just focus on you know being genuine and true to yourself and just finding a good way to package and market yourself okay so the next question I got is will fall 2020 classes be in person so um, fall 2020 has passed so I'm going to answer for fall 2021, but yes, the chancellor has sent out a couple of COVID updates. And as of now, because we are like projected to have like 90% of our student population vaccinated by it, then we are planning to do fall 2021 in person. Okay, so the next question that I got was, would you recommend bringing a bike to UCSD? So um, I personally don't have a bike. I had... I did use a bike for a little bit of my freshman year. I also bought like an electric scooter that I used for freshman year as well. But um, personally, I really like walking everywhere just because I see it as like self-care. I just blast my music and that's how I get my exercise. Um, I like really like walking on campus just because like as someone who finds it really difficult to like motiv motivate myself to go to the gym and like take time out of my day to do that like it gives me a lot of satisfaction knowing that I hit like at least 10,000 steps every day because like I would like without a doubt you will get above 5,000 but it's more likely that you'll hit about 10,000 so in my opinion like I don't think a bike is necessary but if you really value time and efficiency then I would definitely say bring a bike because it takes like 20 minutes to get from Morton to Ravel, they're like the two most opposite points. Whereas if you bring a bike, it'll take you like five to seven minutes. So um, it just depends what you value. So my next question is, do you feel that it's a very STEM focused school and how does it affect you being a social science major? So like the socially dead question, I'm not gonna lie, 
UCSD definitely being a STEM school was another one of the reasons why I didn't commit very fast. I was like a little hesitant and doubtful that this school is a good fit for me just because I am the least STEM person ever. I failed out of the calc series. I like literally like cannot do STEM, trust me. So I was extremely scared, but I actually love being a social science major in a STEM school. I think that it makes me like very unique and special. I feel like you get to stand out more um, as a non-STEM major. And I think that because I don't have to spend so much time in classes, I literally have so much time to do other things. I worked two jobs throughout my first two years and this year I worked three jobs and I like absolutely love it and people aren't like really super stuck up about the fact that you're like not a STEM major. They honestly like don't even care that much but um, I like despite it being STEM focused there's definitely not a shortage of social science opportunities. There are a ton of internships and if anything there's less competition to get them because there's less social science majors. And honestly, I feel like if I went to like a normal social science school, I wouldn't have like as many opportunities because there's just like less competition here. Also, like I didn't have trouble getting internships. I have an upcoming internship for the summer and it's a pretty good one. So um, I definitely, yeah, don't, don't worry about it at all. So I see that I'm getting a lot of like business major questions. My next question is, job opportunities slash internships and resources on campus for international business majors. So as for job opportunities and internships there, it's definitely you need to take your own initiative to find them. We do have like a job resource center and we do have job fairs. We also have Handshake, which is an online kind of like job seeking platform that I've thought to be very helpful, especially for on campus jobs. But in terms of finding like summer internships and like full time careers after college, that's very much up to you. But I think because UCSD overall has a really strong reputation, there is probably a good chance that you'll get interviews. So definitely like you're in a good situation in terms of job opportunities slash internships. I've also had like marketing internships on campus like through the school. So there are a lot of um, on campus relevant experiences that can boost your resume. Um, in terms of resources, we have the Rady School of Management, which has amazing orgs. I just joined PBL, which stands for Phi Beta Lambda. And they're like an undergraduate organization that's sort of like a business fraternity, but not really. And I found that to be extremely helpful in terms of professional development and networking. And then they also have like marketing organizations, investment banking organizations, communications organizations, consulting. So we have a great variety of options. And again, there's definitely no shortage of opportunities in terms of on-campus resources for business majors. All right, so pretty much the rest of the questions that I saw on my video were a lot about like social distance learning, my experience with it and how the housing works. But because like by the time I'm publishing this video, because like we're pretty much gonna go back to normal um, based on like what the chancellor's saying, I don't feel the need to address this. I feel like it would just definitely be in vain. So I'm going to kind of transition into like the commonly asked questions slash important things that I think you all should know. So um, the question that I think a lot of people will be curious about is how housing works for first years. I wish that I remember my tour guides feels because I have this down packed, but um, pretty much for first years, you will be put in a suite we don't like to use the word dorm but you will be put in a suite your housing situation will obviously vary based on what college you're in um the architecture is different how many people are allowed in your suite will differ but how that works is you will basically fill out like a survey with all of your interests and you'll be put with random people unless you like meet people through facebook you can put in a request there but I personally don't think random is so bad. Um, you could be in a single, double, or triple, but um, basically you'll be put in a single, double, or triple, and it really just depends on what college you're in. I know that some colleges don't do triples, and within your suite you will share a bathroom and you'll share a living room, or like a living area. So contrary to other colleges, it won't be like an entire hall full of rooms and then a bathroom at the end. You will be in like your own little mini house and you will get your own living space and a bathroom 
You'll also get a dining plan in conjunction to that. Um, there are a couple different like little levels. I personally got like the $3,500 dining plan my first year, and, but it was definitely enough and I had enough rollover food or I had actually like $1,000 worth of dining dollars over for the next year. Um, our food selection on campus is very good in my opinion. Some people fight me on that, but I personally really like the food on campus, especially because we have a ton of new dining halls. Um, our sixth college and seventh college is absolutely beautiful, by the way, and I heard the food is amazing there. I'm gonna be pretty pellucid though and just admit it, our food is extremely overpriced, so like, when you are able to get off campus, definitely try to get your own like groceries. But in general, I think the food is very good. We have vegan options, places where you could build your own pizza, and there are like Mexican places and the soup. Sorry, I'm like getting distracted because someone's texting me. And like the markets pretty much have like whatever you could possibly need. Um, so there are like just a lot of great options for food. We have vegetarian options everywhere and there are a decent amount of very good dining halls. And um, yeah, I really liked living on campus. So another question that I want to address is how like easy it is switching majors. I got this question a lot when I was like working in the admissions office and like the difference between, oh my God, I think my like nose piercing is falling out. But like I got a lot of questions about the difference between like capped and uncapped majors. So in terms of changing your majors and adding minors, it's so easy. Um, if you're switching between like an uncapped to another uncapped major, let's say you're communications and one day you decide, oh, I want to major in like Cox I with an emphasis in design and interaction. I want to go into user experience. It's extremely easy. You literally just log into your portal and click a button. Like for example, if I woke up one day and I was like, I don't want to do international business. I want to do real estate and development. I would just literally log onto my portal and change my major just like that. However, if you wanna change your major because you didn't get into your first choice, you wanna switch into like computer science or engineering, which are impacted majors, it's a little more difficult. Um, you'll basically have to go through an application process. With some majors, it's a lottery system. So I know computer science is like this, where like you just have to meet the minimum GPA. And if you meet that minimum GPA, it's like random from then on. Whereas I know with other majors like engineering, like mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, it's a little different. I know that it's like just the people with the top GPAs. So um, it's definitely different with each major, but in general, like you can pretty much change your major to whatever you want. But if you are trying to switch into like a capped major, I would say you probably have to work a little harder in your like qualifying classes. All right, so before this video gets too long, I'm going to answer two more questions. So I think that another question that I usually get is how I manage my time with like extracurriculars and classes and you know, just like being a normal human. So for my first two years, I would say that I worked about like 25 hours a week. I had two campus jobs. I was a like campus ambassador or tour guide and then I also worked at one of the dining halls some people in my like uh video actually asked me if i worked at goodies and i was like yes but i'm extremely embarrassed about that because i always looked terrible during goodies my goodie shifts i was always a mess because it was so busy and i had to wear a hairnet yeah so i worked two jobs and i honestly like was so focused on my two jobs that i didn't really join any extracurriculars to be honest and then i would say in terms of classes i typically took um three to four like four classes per quarter um so i'm gonna be real honest my first quarter at ucsd i did absolutely terrible i basically ended my freshman year with below a 3.0 gpa which is very embarrassing to admit um i just did very bad in my classes i to be honest like didn't have the work ethic and i was way too involved in my social life. I just cared about like making friends and going out and like going to frat parties. But like as embarrassing is as embarrassing as it is for me to like admit that to everyone. I also just like really wanted to be honest with you guys because I know that this will happen to some of you. Like even like though you don't want to admit it, like I had like a 4.5 in high school. Like I was on top of it. But um, like, I just want you to know that if you're a current UCSD student, like 
you're not alone. I know that it takes a huge toll on your self-esteem. It took a very huge toll on my self-esteem. I felt like really just dumb, but you're not dumb. Like, trust me, it's like all about the amount of time you spend. But like, I just had a very difficult time my freshman year. I was not good at managing my time. But once I got to sophomore year, um, I got so much better at it. Like something just clicked in me and I think it's just the amount of practice that I had. I got used to how UCSD classes worked. Like I could pump out like a six page essay in like four or five hours. Like I got very good at just doing schoolwork. And I just wanted to include this in the video so that like if anyone is going through it, you can relate. But like what I usually try to do is I will write down every single thing that I want to get done in my notes section. And I also found that when you have too much free time, it's not very good because you tend to think that you have like an unlimited, like copious amount of time to get your work done. But when you're busy, like it will force you to do things. Like when I ha like finish my remote internship and I have like a one or two hour gap between my next class, like that time is finite. So I will use that time to actually get stuff done. And I found that like putting little small tasks on your daily to do's and crossing them off like laundry or just showering also really helps and it kind of creates a domino effect. So I would say that just like writing everything down, a lot of people swear by Google Calendar and just like really forcing yourself to do it. Like if you have a phone addiction like me, literally like shutting off your phone and like putting app limits on your phone will very much help you in that department. All right, so the last thing that I want to address in my video is just like how I've grown as a person at UCSD and just some valuable life lessons. I wanted to leave this video off on a very like positive and philosophical note, but um, pretty much like I want to talk about just how much my confidence has grown at UCSD. I think that I'm just so sure of myself. I obviously have like down days and days where I doubt myself, but Throughout my time at UCSD, I've 100% grown in my confidence and I'm like also someone who like needs external validation, but I've learned that not everyone is gonna like you. Um, embarrassment is a choice. If you choose not to be embarrassed about something, you won't be embarrassed about it. I know who I am and I know that if people don't like me, it's not even a personal issue. Like it's probably just something going on with them. So. Just like my confidence in myself has also grown a lot. I don't define myself by my grades. I don't define myself by the current internship that I have. I don't define myself really by anything. I think that some valuable life lessons are, are that like life is so short. Um, I never thought that I would be where I am today. I never thought that I would be going into my fourth year. I just my entire life was just me leading up to college that was my upbringing was like you just go to college that's all i focused on and that's all i cared about but never did i ever think about actually graduating college i just perpetually thought i would be in my first and second year and i was just extremely scared to grow up and extremely scared to branch away from my family and just to do anything I learned is that even though you think that you'll never be ready or that you won't change or you won't be ready to graduate or move out, you will be ready. Like when the time comes, you will be ready. And the amount of change that I've witnessed in college is astounding. I think that I grew more within like my first week or month of college than I had done in years. You just grow so much in college. Every single year is marked with like a different word and a different experience every single year i've had has been so different a little risky in college i think college you're like in this bubble where like you're protected and you have like like a limitless amount of opportunities and you should try out every single org on campus you should do literally every single thing that you want to do and you should not care about what people think because ucsd is absolutely humongous and people literally do not have the time to care um, even if they did have the time to care, they're too busy thinking about themselves. So you really should take this opportunity to do whatever you want and to apply for things that you, like, don't self-reject. Sorry, this is turning into a rant, but don't self-reject. You should literally apply to every single thing and let them reject you instead of you rejecting yourself. Yeah, that's my advice. Sorry, it's been like five minutes of me talking, but I'm done now. Um, that was my UCSD Q&A. I hope you liked it a lot. I would love to post more videos. 
I realized that like just so many of you like left comments and recently that video has like kind of been spiking in views and I think it's because people are getting ready to start their freshman year so I like did not want to disappoint I know like I got some subscribers from that video so I just want to make sure I fulfill my end of the promise but feel free to leave your recommendations I would love to start posting more um I just want to help you with all your questions so that you could have like the best most informed picture of UCSD and so that you can enjoy your experience here um so yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you all are doing well and I will probably see you soon in the next video bye